Let me ask you about the economy. Um, when trying to open up, one of the challenges is some states are opening up uh, earlier than others. Uh, some countries are opening up earlier. Um, can we be sure, uh, we, you know, that we know uh, what exactly the right levers are and how to open up? And I ask this because uh, there are a lot of governors, for example, who are criticizing the, uh, the predictions that were made. The Florida governor says, look, there were all these models that predicted to us that we would need 200,000, 300,000 hospital beds in use for COVID. We have 2,000 beds. In other words, the predictions were way off. We didn't, you know, and, and the implication is they didn't do an enormous amount of the hardcore lockdown, and they're still okay. What do you say to them? Well, I wouldn't say they're okay. They're not suffering as widespread an epidemic yet. Uh, if they open up enough, they can go back into exponential growth and, you know, compete with New York on that basis. The uncertainties about this mean that because of the exponential nature of this, yes, some models were wildly wrong. You know, models are never going to be perfect in these things. But we can learn, you know, when you have countries uh, that are sending, say, young children back to school, uh, Germany, Denmark, Austria have a good enough testing regime, uh, you know, more competent than the U.S. So they actually will be able to see the effect of that. Norway is actually doing it in a differential within different parts of the country, which will help inform us. The problem with the United States is that unless you interdict travel, any state that goes too far and gets into that exponential growth will be seeding other parts of the country. And so it'll be like international travel where you have force of infection coming in, and that's very tricky to deal with. But, uh, you know, the, the need for the testing piece, uh, you know, I don't, I haven't found anyone to argue with it, but uh, the, uh, they're not stepping up to actually do it yet, uh, and that's got to be the federal level. Um, so w everyone says when we open, it's going to be slow, it's only going to be parts of the economy. People have estimated 20 percent, 30 percent. Give us, you know, the, the best case scenario. Um, <laughs> you know, you've, you've heard this metaphor of the hammer and the dance. The dance being now you start opening up these, uh, uh, the economy and through a kind of moderate amount of uh, social distancing, you are able to achieve. What will we be able to achieve? What's the, what's the good case scenario? You know, the best case is you pick the high value activities like school, manufacturing, construction, and figure out a way to do those with kind of masks and distancing. You know, in the school, you don't want the hallways to have tons of kids all at once or the lunchroom. Um, and then you can see, is that a, are those schools a source of infection spreading up into the elderly, uh, which then, you know, would, would cause some level of mortality? I'm hopeful uh, Bill, there will I, be a way. Can I, keep, yeah. can I just ask you about schools? Because everyone is so, is so curious and worried about this. You have three kids. Um, you know how schools work. I mean, lots of people crowded together in classrooms, in dormitories, in hallways. That is almost the, the definition of school. How, how do you get it going? Well, certainly for the younger age kids where the online substitute is inferior uh, more inferior than as you get up, say, to college level, that online can capture, at least in terms of the academics, a lot of, of what uh, goes on. There, you know, what we've seen in terms of infection levels is pretty low, and you do have uh, some European countries uh, that are moving ahead with that, and because of their testing, will understand uh, what the viral load is and, you know, compare households with kids going to school versus households that don't have that uh, coming in. Uh, so over the course of this summer, some of that will be learned. And in the fall, that will be one of the toughest questions. It's right on the boundary of, is there a tasteful way to do it that, that particularly for the low-income students where the online learning hasn't been fully enabled because either they don't have the equipment or the connection or their teacher isn't set up for it. Uh, you know, the inequity has gotten greater in education uh, so if we can figure out how to do K through 12 in the fall, uh, that would be good. I even think if, if we're creative about it and things have gone well, uh, we'll be able to do college. But there's a lot of data we'll be uh, learning from globally, uh, uh, and we'll see the progress on the tools as well that will inform those decisions. So it'll probably be in August where, you know, the idea of what's the protocol 
uh, how many schools are, are uh, opening up that, you know, we won't really know enough until pretty close to the, the start. So you've you've written both in your uh, in your paper that's on your uh, on Gates notes, which I really recommend people read. Um, and you've said elsewhere, the economy is not going to be anything like uh, it was. It's going to take a long time to recover. It's going to be you know people are going to be surprised at how slow and how how fitful this is. So what is it that the stock market is seeing that you, Bill Gates, are not seeing? The stock market is now basically at a routine annual correction. It seems, you know, it, 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 it is not really factoring in, it seems to me, the kind of economy you're describing. Well, you know, some companies, their valuation, if you took out two years of earnings, there's still enough earnings out in years three to N that the valuation wouldn't change that much. And, you know, if you, so if you have companies that don't run into a liquidity problem and whose long-term profitability is, is strong, then the valuation adjustment isn't necessarily that dramatic. You do have an economy that's going to be operating at a lower level, and that affects all sorts of spending. There's no doubt that'll be the case uh, for years to come. Uh, and so that you know, uh, should affect overall valuations. You know, there aren't that many great investments. I mean, buying Treasury bills uh, right now doesn't seem that attractive. So I'm not as... You know, I'm an expert on vaccines and ther therapy. I talk uh, to people about the economy. Like you, I find it a little uh, surprising uh, where the market is. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to focus on that. You're, are you surprised that Microsoft, for example, is trading at the same price that it was in December uh, before, you know, the coronavirus? You know, tech companies... Uh, in some ways benefit from an acceleration of a move towards digital approaches, even though their next few years they'll have a lot of customers that they'll be, you know, helping out, giving free licenses to, you know, where things won't, won't be as strong. Uh, so, you know, if there's any sector of the economy where you could say, okay, it's not that drastic of a change, you'd probably pick that. But again, valuations is not the, uh, where I add Add them, add the most value.